What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to another episode of our Liverpool FC Let's Play here in Football Manager 2020. Today we have a final double header. Yes, it is going to be the end of the season. We're going to have the FA Cup and the Champions League final. So yes, penultimate episode today. Next episode will be a big end of season recap we'll look for our squad our business going forward plans for the team and such we have been a little bit busy early in the transfer market i kind of wanted to get the dealings done early one of them is done we have decided to go and splash a bit of cash on memphis depay now i think i've got a really good price for this chap uh, you can see here we've brought him in for 34 million pounds and uh well really what i'm thinking with him is he is going to be our backup to Mane out on the left but also he can double up as a striker for us and that is something that with Haaland out injured has kind of become apparent the fact that we don't really have a third choice striker my thinking is going forward that we'll have obviously Dybala, Firmino, Mane and Salah and then Haaland, Suso, Olmo and then Depay will kind of be our alternative four with Olmo playing as the advanced playmaker um, so in that sense we'd have a straight swap so I feel like for 34 million pounds as well it's just a really good value for money transfer he only joins on 80,000 pounds a week too and at 26 years old plenty left in the tank the other deal that I'm looking to get done is a centre-back I'm torn though uh we've got two options the first is jonathan tar 24 years old playing for leverkusen obviously a superb center back in his own right uh, a player who we're familiar with through managing leverkusen last year but the other player and the player i'm leaning more towards being perhaps the the solution here is nathan ake my thinking is that joe gomez and matip will be our first choice uh, sorry joe gomez and van dyke will be our first choice center backs rather and then matip and then one of these two chaps will be our you know second pairing almost uh, the reason i'm leaving leaning towards ake is that he's left foot and he can play left back both players are going to cost around a similar sum of money Ake actually a million pounds cheaper um, and I think Ake will want slightly less when it comes to wages although that's still a little up in the air if we compare the two of them though there's not a great deal of difference between them I'd say Jonathan Tart is better defensively whereas Nathan Ake uh, slightly has him beaten out in terms of the technical ability of a footballer and perhaps when it comes to his heading as well. But yeah, similar ages. I think Ake might be the one, especially because he would also be homegrown. And uh, yeah, you can see here, absolutely no negatives to speak of, which is obviously a good little plus. So potentially two transfer dealings to be done there. We did, of course, wrap up the league uh, since last episode. We did end up winning it. We won it convincingly. Arsenal slipping up in their last two games. Meanwhile, we beat both Burnley 5-0, as you can see here, and then Tottenham 2-1. Um, we did actually get a little bit lucky in this game. Sanchez with an own goal in the last minute to get us the win against Tottenham, although it didn't change a great deal, really. You have to wonder, had it been a case of us drawing that game, meaning that we don't win the title, would there have been a max-fixing investigation when a Tottenham player scores an own goal to ensure that Arsenal don't win the title? It would have been kind of funny to see how that might play out. Anyway, we've got the FA Cup final to start things here against Arsenal. I will warn you guys now, and you might be able to hear it in my voice, I am feeling a little bit sick. It's kind of flu season now, you know? We're in November, winter is coming. I've not had my flu jabs yet for the month. Or well, not for the month, for the year. And I felt better. So if my throat starts to fade and if my voice starts to sound weird by the end of this episode, you know why, you know what's happened. Hopefully, I can battle on through it. That, that, I mean, it'd be a little bit awkward if my voice just vanished halfway through. As a result, we might not be as over, not over the top. I don't feel like I'm an over the top screaming child, you know, FIFA YouTuber opening packs, but there might be a little bit less oomph in my voice today. Anyway, I'm going to hope the game's going to load. I think we're going to have to do our thing. This occasionally happens. It starts warming up for a while. So we'll be back in a second once the teams are ready. Okay, guys, so it is game day. I've had this weird problem with the beta where sometimes the game takes a long time to load. Is anyone else having that problem? Is it just me? Sometimes games load instantly. Sometimes I have to sit around for a minute or two. Either way, we're into the game now. Now that I think about it, it's always when we play at Wembley that it seems to happen. I don't know if that's actually a thing, but that's the theory we're going to go with. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Robertson is not available for selection today. So a little bit of injury news there. Uh, but the rest of our team is pretty much at full strength. Hemrix is going to be the man to slot in at left back. On the bench, of course, we have not got Haaland because he's still out injured. So we are a little bit short. 
when it comes to attacking options. You know, if we need an impact player to bring on off the bench and play as a striker, we'd probably have to put Mane or Salah into the striking position and bring someone else on in the wide areas if we wanted to go down that route. Hopefully, of course, we won't be chasing the game here and maybe we can have something early on. Alexander-Arnold, 10 minutes gone, whipping it in, cleared it away as far as Hemricks, who now... Well, tries to get it in. It's dealt with by Arsenal and now Aubameyang to launch the counter-attack with his pace. Becker, though. I don't know why I keep calling Alisson Becker. I do it every episode. It's Alisson. Um, well, obviously it's Alisson Becker is his actual name. But I think it's because in the, ma the match engine, the name tag says A. Becker. Either way, let's not get hung up on these little things that really don't matter in the grand scheme of things. We have a cup final to focus on here. Fabinho, what a switch of play that is. Now with Henderson, little 1-2 of Alexander-Arnold. Can he put the ball in? He does. Fabinho's there. And he headers it so, so narrowly over the crossbar. That was incredibly, incredibly close. Oh, that's... Ah, oh, that it needs to go under the crossbar. It needs to hit the target there, and you have a free header at the edge of the box. Unfortunately, Fabinho on that occasion wasn't able to divert it goalwards. But we've got another chance here. Salah bringing it forward. Both teams seemingly relying on their pacey forwards to break away so far in this game. And uh, well, speaking of the Devils, we've got Guendouzi bringing the ball forward, breaking away. He hits it. Allison with a lovely little stop again. Two clear cut chances going Arsenal's way, and they failed to take either of them. I'm going to do a shouty shouty talk with our team here because we have not been good enough so far in this game. We need to step it up here. Danny Celebos with it. Or is it Celebalos? I don't. I think it's Cebalos rather than Cebalos. Who knows? I mean, most Arsenal fans and Spanish native speakers probably know. But who knows? Uh, right. Ten minutes left of the half. Do I want to change anything here? Oh my gosh, we've hit the woodwork. Occasionally highlights start late in the beta, I've noticed. There was one there. I think we hit the woodwork. According to the match stats, we hit the woodwork. So I assume that was it. So we're looking a little more threatening, even if we didn't see the chance itself. At half time here, it's going to be nil-nil though. A little bit of a cagey affair. Let's see if we can step it up in this second half. Van Dijk needs to be careful on a booking. Alexander Arnold being a bit tired is a concern. I'm actually going to take him off and just play it safe. With one, I kind of cast ahead to the Champions League final in a week's time. Um, debatably going to be a tougher game than this one against Arsenal. Of course, PSG, the team waiting and raring to go in the final. This really just the, the precursor to that in many ways. The starter before the main course. And well, we need to finish our starter here. And our starter is fighting back. Aubameyang to bring the ball forward. Switches it to Pepe. I don't know if that hit the woodwork. I think it did. I don't think Alisson actually touched that there. And we've been let off the hook just a little bit. Apparently some of our players frustrated by the demand more that I gave them. Which is not ideal. Can we get the ball here? Salah dispossessed. Lacazette with it. In quite a deep area, it's got to be said. Now Kolasinac at left back. What can he do? The Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, left back. Finding some space out there, which, well, no one can pick him out for. Naby makes a great little tackle. Now let's build from the back. What can we do here? 27 minutes left on the clock. And we're yet to have our first goal of the game. Could it come here? Mo Salah on this right-hand side, holding it up, plays it across to Henderson. Now with Keita. Puts it back wide. Fabinho crosses it into Hemricks, who nods it down to Mane. Have a go, he doesn't. He lays off really intelligently. We work it superbly in the box. Unfortunately, Dybala's effort at the end of it all does go wide. Let's make some changes here. I'm going to bring in Olmo for um, Mane. I'm also going to move Salah into striker and take off Firmino, who's been a little... I don't want to say hit and miss, just a little bit of miss, I guess is probably the fairest way to put it. Uh, but yeah, shuffling things around. Salah's going to go into, attack, uh, into the lone striker kind of position, bringing in some fresh players in the wide areas. Five minutes left. You feel like any goal now would be the winner. And while well, time just continues to trickle away here. Five minutes left. A highlight starting here in Arsenal's half. Socrates with it at the back. Manages to get the ball over Suso's head there. You thought for a second they were playing themselves into trouble. They might still be doing that though. Fabinho brings it forward. Now is Suso. He passes it inside to Dybala. Fabinho, lovely build-up play here. Suso, options on the head. Gives it to Dybala who switches it to Hemricks, the left-back. He passes it across and Salah is there. We moved him into the striker position and he scores not long after. That is the breakthrough. It's really our first chance of real kind of clear-cutness 
of the entire game. And Henricks with the assist from left back. What a signing he has ended up being. A player disregarded from Monaco as, you know, only good enough to be a backup. We came in, we brought him in for six million. And you know what? In the absence of Robertson and when we've needed to rotate things around at the back, he has been a consistent big game player. And he has single-handedly helped us lift the FA Cup here. 1-0 it finishes. Hardly a classic. We weathered an Arsenal storm early on. They didn't take their chances and ultimately, we have come out the better team. Henricks with the player of the match performance at left back. An unlikely hero. And, well, with it seeing, seeming unlikely that Robertson is going to be fit for the Champions League final, uh, he could well be the player for us. You can see Ake here wants to be a squad player. Lots of big teams interested in him. I kind of want to get this deal done early if we can. He only wants 40 grand a week. That is a little bit of a bargain, isn't it? I wonder if we can get him on a super long-term deal. I would be willing to give him a little bit extra if he commits to an eight-year deal. Do I actually? I don't really need an eight-year deal signing now I think about it. He's 25. So a five-year deal on £40,000 a week. If he signs that, that is a crazy good value signing in terms of the actual salary we're playing, paying for what would be kind of our third slash fourth choice centre-back who can also play left-back. Which would be a nice little bonus because we have been a little bit short in the left back position so far this year. Anyway, we've got a game against PSG. It's going to be in a week's time. My voice is not going to continue to function if I can talk for, for the next week as we go towards that game. So let's jump forward and uh, we'll see how we get on, shall we? Okay guys, so we are back here for the second game of the episode and the biggest game of the season. It's the Champions League final, a chance to win this back-to-back -back times for Liverpool. So a little bit of pressure on our shoulders. We have had some not-so-great injury news going into this game. Hemrix has picked up an injury, pulled knee ligaments, he's out for the rest of the season. Andy Robertson... Did a fitness test, didn't even get close to passing it. You can see his condition here. It's not great. Obviously, Chamberlain has picked up a little bit of a knock, so that's not ideal. And we've had to shuffle things around. Joel Matip is going to come in and play right centre-back for us alongside Van Dijk. Joe Gomez is then going to go and play left-back for us. It's a position we've had to ask him to play a few times this year. Granted, against easier opposition than PSG today. But besides those two... Um, you know, changes. We're well, fairly full strength. Uh, Haaland is also on the bench for today's game. You can see he did a fitness test, recommended to play a maximum of 45 minutes. If we need an impact sub, he is the man to bring on and maybe the man with a plan. We'll have to see how he can do for us. Um, but yeah, the, the more we kind of look at this situation with a few defensive injuries and the lack of a left back, the more I am sat looking forward to Regillon joining us as our backup left back from next season. And the more I'm thinking that Nathan Ake, who is left footed and can play left back, is a better shout than Jonathan Ta. You'll notice here, Jonathan Ta, uh, we've got the option to confirm the transfer. I've not confirmed it yet because I am half thinking maybe Nathan Ake is the player to go for. And if we do go for him, we're going to have quite a lot of wage budget left over because both Ake and Depay are going to come in for a combined total of £120,000 a week. You might remember our wage budget was around, I think, 500000 excess. So we could end up with a little bit more money to rejig around. And of course, there will probably be sales. There's also clauses here that we can maybe look to do. But of course, this isn't for the here and now. This is stuff that we can worry about down the line during the off-season. And, well, with my voice already hurting quite a lot, let's get into the Champions League final, shall we? Oh, OK, we can have actually as many subs as we want here. So with that in mind, just, just stick everyone who could play on the bench, I guess. Unfortunately, Keanu Hoover, uh, Milner and Lonegan, or Lonegan uh, not registered. Of course, we unregistered Milner to register Balotore, who then got a long-term injury, um... I mean, Gomez is currently playing left back. If he was to get injured, Balo Torre, who's on loan from Monaco, would probably be the only other option we have in our team to play left back. Man, that is a scary, scary team we are up against. I'm already contemplating maybe playing the fullbacks on defend rather than support, uh, or rather than attack. But at least to start things, I don't want to be too respectful to PSG. I want to play our own game. It's a huge, huge tie. It's not going to be easy. They've got Neymar on one wing, Mbappe on the other, Akadi up front, Aya and Verratti in the middle. 
it's a little bit scary. And while speaking of one of the devils, Neymar is on the free kick here. He hits it. He bends it. It's just gone wide. We've been let off the hook. That's a concern, isn't it? This is not going to be an easy game. We know that. It's, PSG are nuts in Football Manager. I, I, I experienced them firsthand, obviously, a number of times last year with Leon Live, which if you're a newer viewer to the channel, go watch Leon Live. It's a very different series to this. We did everything recorded live, longer kind of podcasty episodes. If you want something to binge watch that has over 100 episodes, I've got you covered. Anyway, enough shameless plugging. We need to do some plugging of our defence from the looks of things. Because right now, PSG are finding a way through. They've got a corner here. Marquinhos denied by Alisson. What a stop that was by the goalkeeper. Absolutely huge just to you know divert that over the crossbar. Another corner whipped in here. Henderson gets it clear. Only as far as Mbappe, who goes back to Neymar. We can't give him space out wide unless he's offside. In which case, we can give him all the time and space he wants. Because it, it doesn't matter because he's offside. Um... I need to do a shout here. We've not turned up so far in this game, and that is a little bit nerve-wracking to say. And, well, Matip is feeling the nerves. I'm feeling the nerves. Everyone else is focused. So I, I, I guess that's something, right? Um, since we've done that shout, actually, things have turned around. PSG started this game really well, and whilst we've not had any highlights in a while, look at these stats. 13 shots, 8 on target. We are turning the screw, perhaps, and, well... Half-time has come. It's nil-nil. It's like the first final. These have not been finals for the neutral, but, I mean, from my perspective, we're looking pretty solid defensively, and if teams can't score against us, they can't win against us. We'll hope that we can put in a similar level of defensive performance and keep it going. Uh, Salah has maybe got a tight groin. I think we've got a chance it, haven't we? Dybala whipping it in here. Firmino hits the woodwork with the header at the back post. Oh, it's the best chance we've had of the game so far. We've had three half chances and zero clear-cut chances. There could be another opportunity here. Trent Alexander-Arnold to the edge of box. Fabinho hits it. Oh, my word. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was destined for the top corner. Unfortunately, it's just gone wide. But, well, we could be about to have a third highlight in a row. The ball has hit the crossbar. We've now had that chance for us as well through Fabinho's long-range effort. I mean, if they go up the other end and score now, we're going to rue those two half opportunities that we squandered. Although Henderson wins it here. Salah now with it. Switches the play, looking for Mane, who takes it down superbly. Plays it side to Dybala, who tucks it home. And, well, we bought him for big money. He was the big landmark signing for us at the start of the year. Dybala, the young Argentine Comes big for us again on the big stage. Playing that advanced playmaker on attack role. He just finds himself in these little pockets of space. What a touch that is by Mane to take it past Kera. And then to Dybala who just tucks it into the bottom corner. And whilst our defence has a little bit of a makeshift look about it. Obviously with us having to play Joe Gomez at left back and Matip at centre back. You would not know it so far based on this performance. Another highlight here. Kera. Winning the ball this time. He is going to have to try and make amends for that error in the build-up to our goal. Alexander-Arnold, what a tackle that is. Mo Salah bringing the ball forward here. Gives it to Dybala. Mane's on the left. Pick him out. He does pick him out. Can Sadio finish it? Navas tips it wide. Alexander-Arnold to Firmino. Henderson hits it. I mean, he scored from that range a number of times this year. I thought it was going to happen again. Man, this game has sparked into life. It's still only 1-0, though. And now it's PSG on the offensive. Mane wins it. We have space to break into here. Can he switch the ball to Salah? Oh, my word. He can't. For a second, I thought he pulled out a pass out the top drawer. Unfortunately, couldn't quite find his man. In the, the Before this highlight started, I was thinking about making some changes. Oh, my word. Neymar, clean throw on goal. You would have backed him to score that. Right. Let's calm down a little bit. Firmino's not had a good game. I'm going to take him off. Salah's not had a good game. And you know what? I'm going to make the big call to take him off as well. We're going to bring in Suso. We're going to bring in Haaland. And now we need to deal with this set piece here. Parades at the back post. Suso, fresh off the bench with a superb little tackle, tries to find his fellow substitute in Haaland. Unfortunately, it was dispossessed. PSG now with the ball, lumping it forward. Alisson should get there. He does. And now Mane with it. For a second, I thought Alisson's clearance was going straight to a PSG player to have a shot from range. Joe Gomez, what a ball that is to Haaland, who's all upon his lonesome. I'm not sure what that header was all about. 
I don't think he knows what it was all about either, to be fair. We win the ball here to Barla, to Henderson. Hits it against the woodwork. It's happened again. We hit the crossbar so many times with Jordan Henderson. 75 minutes gone. And this, for a 1-0 final, it's been a classic. Haaland steals the ball. Can he finish it one-on-one? -on -one? He can't. And much like Neymar's down the other end, both sides having many a clear-cut chance to try and make something happen. You can see here, PSG have had two clear-cut chances. We've had two. We have had four half chances and significantly more shots. I would say on balance, we deserve to be in the lead like we are. But the fact it's a one-goal margin and the fact that they're on the attack again here with 12 minutes left has me scared. It's Kerr with it. Inside to Sarabia. Now over Aya. Who looks inside to Paradez. He switches the play over to Bernat, the Spanish left back. Can we force an error out of them? Thiago Silva and Bernat having their own little game at the back. They try and switch the play. Gomez wins that. That is a huge interception. He dinks it through to Dybala. What a ball that is. Can Dybala finish it again? He can't. My head is in my hands. I, I'm covering my eyes. I can't look. I'm kind of gouging my own eyes out. It's hard to watch this right now. We've had so many opportunities. I will not forgive us if we somehow don't win this. Dybala crosses in. Haaland is offside. In fact, it was probably Dybala who was offside on the left. Eight minutes left. There's another highlight. What is happening? What is happening? It's Neymar still on the pitch, still causing me nightmares. Trying to pick out Icardi. He can't on that occasion. But when he's back on the ball and when Neymar has the ball at his feet, you have to respect him. Gomez with a fantastic little header there. Joe Gomez at left back has done everything for us. That was a cynical foul by Marquinhos. VAR is going to have a look at this. Is this a red card? Are they judging whether or not he was last man here? Or if it was violent conduct? VAR is reviewing it. Of course, we're in Europe, so it's a different type of VAR to what we've experienced in the league season. What's it going to do? What's it going to give? It's not a red card. It's not, I mean, it's just a booking. He's got a long way to run to find Marquinhos now. I'd book him again for descent ref, to be fair. Marquinhos might consider himself a lucky man because Dybala, I think, was probably through there. I feel like Marquinhos has got away with it because of how far it was away from goal. And with that, time has just trickled away. What has happened? What has happened there? Nothing. A game that felt like it was going to have this really big bombastic climax just ends with us lifting the trophy. We'll take it. 1-0 it finishes. Dybala was the man with the goal. I'm not going to lie. I kind of miss having that end of game highlight. The fact that Navas got man of the match for them, despite conceding, perhaps gives you a, a pretty good idea of how that game went. But I mean, what a season it has been for us. We have won absolutely everything. Players get all the medals in the world. Congratulations, boys. Two Champions Leagues in a row. I mean, I kind of now want to try and match Real Madrid's three years in a row. We've received a hell of a lot of money. And we've, we've paid out a hell of a lot of money as well, to be fair. Um, you can see how well we did here. Absolutely superb performance. We deserve that. Top goal scorer was Salah. Top assists. Future Liverpool man Depay, who... Let's be honest, one of the reasons I've signed him is £34 million, but he also got 12 goals and 13 assists this year for Leon in the league. That fills me with optimism. But uh, yeah, what a season it has been. We have won just about everything. Of course, next episode we'll have an end of season kind of review video. I do hope you guys are looking forward to that. I will. I almost feel like apologising because I feel like the last two games of the season, these two cup finals today, have been a little anticlimactic. We've kind of just cruised through and won them both 1-0, but kind of comfortable 1-0s at the same time. But I guess it's good that we stayed so strong defensively despite missing some of our big key players. Anyway, I have no doubt there is going to be some business to be done over the summer. Of course, next episode we'll be reviewing the season as a whole, looking through the stats, award winners, and all that good stuff. Hopefully you're excited for it. If you have enjoyed this video, guys, do drop a like on it. It is massively, massively appreciated. Hopefully I'm feeling better soon and my voice returns to normality. And well, until then, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.